Hello, here we are walking through how to set up the free version of WordFence, which is by far the most popular WordPress security plugin with over 4 million active installs. I'm going to try and make this video as quick and as easy as possible. But if you want to hear more about the pros and cons of WordFence, I do have another video on security plugins. Link will be below. And in that, I also feature another very different free alternative to WordFence called Malcare and I explain why I think either of these are worth taking a look at. I'm not a security expert, I have been using WordPress since 2007, and I've been involved in the making and maintaining of a few hundred sites now, so have come up against a few security issues. But WordFence itself is very easy to set up out of the box. It does have a number of options and features that could easily overwhelm, but they do turn out to be quite wonderful, in fact. And if we've not met before, I'm David Wormsley. I build client sites with WordPress. I do a little bit of consulting. And when I'm not doing that, I try and help others to get the best out of WordPress. So if you want to stay in touch, then please consider clicking on the red subscribe button below. I think that's enough of an introduction. Let's get started. To install WordFence, we'll need to do the usual. Go to Plugins, Add New, and go over to the search bar and add in the keyword WordFence, and we should see something like this. I know we need to install this one because it says WordFence Security Firewall and Malware Scan, and it has over 4 million active installations. But there are two other plugins by WordFence. There's WordFence Assistant, which I've never used, but as I understand it, it allows you to clean up some of the data that is gathered by the main plugin. And should you find for some reason that you are locked out of your site due to WordFence security, I believe it helps you to get back in. But we've been installing WordFence on scores of sites for over five years, and we've never needed to use this plugin. There is one more, which is really a cut down version version of the main plugin. It doesn't have the firewall or the scanner in it. It just concentrates on the login security. So we won't need that. I'm going to install this one now and it should be uploading the files. And in a moment, I will be able to activate it. And when that's done, it should take us to a screen which is going to ask us for our email address. So it will let us know when we have a problem on our site. And it's up to us whether we want to join their security mailing list. I recommend it because it has very good articles on vulnerabilities that are in popular plugins and what they're doing about this. But I'm gonna say no in this case because I'm already signed up. We will need to agree to their terms and conditions by clicking on this box. And also this is relatively new. If you are a data controller under GDPR, there is one more thing that you should do. I'm sure most people miss this, but if you click here, it will take you to this article that explains a lot more about it. And really what it amounts to is that you're supposed to add your signature to this PDF and send it back to them to Defiant, which is the company behind WordFence. I'm sure many miss that and I am in this case because it's just a test setup. So the next screen is inviting us to add a premium key. I don't have that because I'm using the free version, so it's no thank you there. And we'll go over to our dashboard now. And with the navigation here, we can get to most things through all options here, or the main sections that are contained on this side on the right. And with all of these screens, when you're in for the first time, then you get this little tour around. I'm just gonna skip over this quickly. And let's start by saying yes to auto updates on the plugin. This is something new to WordPress, but I trust WordFence. So I'm going to say yes in this case. The first thing that we really want to do is to sort out our firewall. Now it says it's doing something over here, but that might be due to the fact that I've already installed this earlier. What we actually need to do is to go over and configure our firewall to our server. And for most people, this is going to be straightforward. It is going to pick up on the type of hosting that you have, but you'll probably want to check that is absolutely correct because in some cases you may have to go through an extra a step and go to the help documents here. I think if you're on site ground, you need to add something to the host in there before it's going to work properly. But for most people, it's going to be straightforward. It tells you to download the HT access file and user any file. 
Now, these are files that are modified by WordFence, and these are just so you have a copy of it. But for all the years that we've been using that, we've never needed to reinstall those copies. I think you need to do that to be able to move forward. So let's just go and do that now. And good, it says nice work, the firewall is now optimized. Well, it says that, but in fact, the firewall by default will be going into learning mode. And we can see this here, we can set it to something else. Now this is a period for seven days while WordFence tries to work out how your site is working. So there may be some themes or plugins that make requests that may to WordFence look like an attack. And it wants to make sure that it's not going to give you some false positives. So you can help in this learning over these seven days by doing day-to-day -day tasks. So creating some posts, publishing them, activating or deactivating plugins and themes. All of this will help with its learning. Also, if you are someone who's installing WordFence because you think you've got a security issue, you think your site might have been hacked, then there's no point in putting it in learning mode because it's really going to be learning what the hackers are doing as normal behavior. So you want to disable this and then head off to your scanner and sort out the problem before you put it into learning mode. I hope that makes sense. Let's just quickly mention here that there is a real-time IP blocking. This is related to the newsletter. They are often testing out and finding security issues in plugins. If they find it, they will put automatic protection for their premium users but the free users won't get this for 30 days. So that's one of the advantages of the pro version. On the whole, this is all you really need to do to set up the firewall, but there are some other options and we'll quickly look over them. I don't want to overwhelm you, so we will skirt over a few of these. So let's go to the advanced options. And the first one is something we'll ignore. This is only if your hosting is blocking certain countries. You might need to tick this on for some reason. Also, if you know about certain IP addresses that you want to bypass WordFence altogether, you can add them here. The same as if you know that there are some that you want to block, you can add them here or just ones that want to be ignored for alerting purposes. Also, if you're using Manage WP to manage the number of sites, then you might want to click on this. So it's one of the allowed services so it doesn't start to block that. That's all I can say on this. Again, with this, you would leave it at the defaults. This is the kind of protection that it is offering. But it is possible that a theme might be doing something that looks like one of these and is getting blocked. So you might need to untick one of these. But it's really, if you get a problem, we've never had a problem. Let's take a look at brute force protection. This is really when we get into the area of performance. There are lots of attacks, particularly people trying to log in with bots. <laughs> And you can adjust this or you can leave it as it is. If you want to try and get better performance and you know that people who are going to be logging into your site are not going to make mistakes with their logins, then you can kind of reduce this and tighten it up. So before it locks somebody out for a certain period of time, it gives bots 20 goes at the password and the login names as well. So we can block this down. I would probably take this down to something like five and password attempts, probably the same, because I don't imagine any of our clients going in will have a problem and I could block them out for longer if I wanted. Again, it's performance, it's up to you to decide. There is a way of immediately locking out invalid usernames. People are just guessing what those usernames are, but there is some danger with that. If you're likely or someone is likely to mistype their own username, then they're going to get blocked out. So perhaps a better way to do this is to block out names that you know you don't, that you're not going to use at all. So admin would be a classic one because in the WordPress of old, admin used to be the default I hope it isn't these days it's not a good idea to have it so if you're not using that you might want to put admin out because you know you'll be blocking out people who are just taking a chance who are hackers the rest of this you probably don't need to touch so I'm going to leave that enforce strong passwords you don't need this on if it's only you and you've got a strong password uh, this is only going to be needed if you do have a data breach and I think that pretty much covers it 
and you do by default participate in real-time word fence security network i think that is where it's gathering some information but you could decide not to but i think it's fair on a free plugin to allow this let's talk again about another performance thing which is the rate limiting so this is Really for users or bots that are crawling through your site, that's happening a lot of the time and there's a balance to be had here. By default, it's set it up so anything by Google is verified and it can kind of do what it likes. The rules that we're setting here don't apply to them. But there are other directories and there are other search engines which may crawl your site. So when you're looking at this, you might think a regular user will only make so many requests in a certain amount of time and you might want to just block or throttle them, but you have to consider that there are bots. So what I think I would recommend most is using their great documentation. Any of these you can click on and you can get some advice. So looking through this, they guess that probably a safe measure would be 240 per minute allowing for your bots there. So if I go in there, I could go to 240 and whatever their recommendation is to throttle or block it really depends on you i'd probably go safe and throttle it and it's the same really with all of these again with 404s the documentation will tell you that if your site is fairly simple and very well made and you haven't made any major url structural changes to it it's not likely people should find many 404s so that is probably hackers but if that's not the case then you'll want to allow for that you don't want to block out genuine bots that are actually kind of helping you that really is the rule of thumb with this i think that's all i really need to say on this you can kind of check these out for yourself or just leave them as they are and this last one again is something i've not needed to use when the firewall is in learning mode. If you've got some different kind of URL parameters here, it's going to pick up and make a rule for those so you don't get false positives. Perhaps if you were doing some advertising campaign where you're monitoring things going to your site and you give them a different URL, you might want to add it here to see that they are not blocked by WordFence. I think that's the case where you might use that. And I think that really concludes the firewall. As I say, you could probably set it at the defaults and it's going to do a pretty good job for you. Let's move on now to the scanner, which is also one of the major things for me. And again, we get a quick tour of the features. Okay, let's go to the top. What should we say on this? Shall we just run a scan? first then this may take some time how the scanner actually works is that on the free version wordfence itself dictates the time that this scan is going on and it will do two basic scans for the first two days and on the third day or rather every 72 hours it will do a much fuller scan by default and that can use up a fair number of resources now i've done this on purpose i've put in a file change so you can just see what happens it's given me the results i've put in in one of my folders a hack with an extension and it really shouldn't be in the folder so it's picked up on this just so I can show you what happens. If this was a file that's been modified that's in the WordPress repository, it will allow me to check the file as it originally should be against my file so I can see what's actually happened. In this case, I can just view the file and I put a little hello in there and I don't want this. So I'm actually going to delete that and I can run another scan and everything should be okay. And it will notify me that there was a problem here. What I mentioned in an earlier video that one of the downsides to this really excellent scanner is that it can be resource heavy and if you're not on the premium version you can't determine when those scans are taking place so they may be maybe you've got multiple sites on one server and they're all going to go off at the same time so it's going to use up a lot of resources there are some things that you can do to change that let's go into the options so the basic options are that we are on standard and that's the default that's recommended. If you think you've been hacked, then you might want to turn this on and it's likely to produce some false positives because it's scanning much more deeply. If you've got really poor hosting, you can go to limited scan, but it's really going to tell you less about problems that you might have. Or we can move on to our custom scans. 
Now I'm just going to quickly click on this because I don't think there is anything I need to mention here. No, there isn't. Let's go to our performance. And here, if I click on this, I'll have to get rid of this. You'll see it's moved me to custom scans already. So here again, I would go to the documentation rather than taking my word for it, but you can extend the length of time that that scan needs or how many resources it's going to use up on your site should you need to. Should you find that your sites are slowing down or you're getting some problems because you're on shared hosting, then you may need to take a look at this. Otherwise, I would say you would probably just keep it on the standard scan and let it do its job. And I think that's all I need to say on the scanner. Yes, nothing in there at all. Let's move on to the next one, which is tools. I haven't saved anything here. So it keeps prompting me and here we go again. So this is where we move into this section where we see something of our live traffic. I'll probably make some changes to this. We've got no live traffic to look at, but it's looking at all the kind of things that are going on. So we can really see what is happening and we can, we can have that show actually on our menu bar if we want to. It stores this stuff in the database, but it will clear itself automatically and we can change that. There are some other tools as it is the tool section where we can look up an IP address in or give us some information. This is very handy because there are a lot of settings. You might get it to exactly how you want it for all of your sites. So you can export this and then import it again. And then we've got diagnostics over here really for troubleshooting. Now it will show me here that there is an issue with my PHP environment, but I actually already know that this is not a problem. So it's really about the fact that we are not allowing WordFence any information about the permissions on our folder. It will not affect the way that WordFence is working in this case. So I really left that there just so you could see, but it might be worth just going and checking to see if there is something and then doing a Google search to see if it's something you need to worry about, whether it's going to affect how WordFence works, which this one isn't. Okay, let's move on to the next feature, which is login security. And well, this is very popular because I believe this is the only plugin that's freely available that will give you two factor authentication. I'm just going to go back here. This is where you can use a device or your mobile as an extra level of security here. So you can kind of scan it to get into the back end of your site. I have to confess I've not been using that. And I think it's partly because of the fact that it wasn't available for free in the earlier versions of WordFence. I think this probably needs another video to cover it. You would really need to follow the setup here, but it is one of the main features I think of this particular plugin and why it's got its own plugin as well. So I'm gonna skip over that. Let's go over to our all options now and we'll just check a few things. We don't need to worry about license. We saw that we don't have one. View the customizations. It's just about where you can display things. So live traffic, you can put it in the menu as I mentioned. In the general word fence options, there is really only one here. Now, maybe another one, Cloudflare. If you're using that, you might need to tick that on. Otherwise, I think it's pretty much as things are here. There is the hide WordPress version, which used to be recommended, but there are other ways of finding out what WordPress version you're using. They can go and look at the various scripts and tell. So it's up to you. They recommend at the moment that you don't use it. So it's left unticked. And uh, this is a pause when the scan is going on, when it loses focus, but I just leave that on. You, you might see that in action. The one thing that I generally do tick on here is that I have it so it removes all the tables and data from the database when I delete the plugin. Otherwise, it's going to leave that stuff. If I decide that I'm going to go with another security plugin, I've got all this stuff that I don't need there that's going to stay. So you might find actually on very low resource hosting that when you do this and you delete, it might just put your site down for a while while it's kind of clearing up after itself, but it will more than likely come back. It's just something to note. Okay, dashboard options. 
if you want they're turned on by default but you can get rid of them if you don't want them showing on your main dashboard email preferences well these are really up to you there's a lot of different types of email one i particularly like was the fact they used to tell me whether someone had logged into the site and where they had logged in from but you might just want to determine which ones you want to turn on and off here i'd want to know if it's been deactivated the plugin okay so that's that you'll probably best to leave them all on and then see what you like later email summary you can get that once a week if you choose or you can get rid of that let's have a look we've done the firewall options we've done the blocking options we've done the scan options and we've got some others for live traffic over here which i said i'd probably set here security only is on here or all traffic so Actually, I'm going to leave that exactly as it is. And you've got some settings here where you can how much of that live traffic you're going to store in your database. So if you've got a particularly bloated database, you might want to reduce this, but it is going to clear up after itself. And that, I think, brings us to the end. I hope that wasn't too overwhelming and you found some use for this. Please ask me any questions if there is something that you think I might be able to help with. And I hope to see you in another video soon. Thank you. Bye-bye.